Hey, Sahar Galt here, and in this video, we're going to talk about harmonic distortion, what it is, and how you might use it to make a better mix. Distortion is really any form of processing that changes the waveform of the signal. But we usually talk about distortion in the context of when circuits get overloaded and waveforms get clipped. Imagine you start with a perfect sine wave. This has the characteristic sinusoidal shape with a frequency of 100 Hz. Now, if I overdrive it, the tops of the wave will start to flatten out, and as a result of the change in waveform, you can see new frequencies being introduced. In this case, 300, 500, 700 Hz, and so on. These are whole number multiples of our input frequency. We call these overtones, or harmonics. And this altered wave shape and introduction of harmonics is exactly what we mean by harmonic distortion. And it turns out that harmonic distortion can make things sound fuller, warmer, thicker. And as a sound design or mixing tool, this can be really powerful. In talking about harmonic distortion, it's sometimes important to differentiate whether the harmonics introduced are even multiples of the input frequency or odd. Certain types of gear, designs of circuits, and types of components will introduce distinct amounts of even versus odd harmonics when distorting. And these different varieties of distortion sound different. This might be best explained musically. If we go back to our perfect sine wave, generating a signal at 100 hertz, its first even harmonic would be at 200 hertz. Double the fundamental. An octave above it. And an octave is a pure, sonorous interval. The next even harmonic would be four times the fundamental. 400 hertz. Another octave. And the next even harmonic after that will be six times the input frequency. 600 hertz or two octaves and a fifth above the fundamental, which is another very pure, sonorous interval. And so distortion that tends to produce even harmonics sounds smooth, musically sympathetic, reinforcing. Odd harmonics, multiples of three, five, and seven, and so on, produce a different kind of sound. Again, if we relate this back to the signal of 100 hertz, the first odd harmonic would be at 300 hertz. Well, that's an octave and a fifth above our fundamental, bringing in a sense of richness. The next odd harmonic would be five times the fundamental, or 500 hertz. And that would be two octaves plus a major third. And that creates a phantom major chord. This is already creating a much more intense sound than even order harmonics. Now the next odd one, seven times the fundamental, or 700 hertz, creates a very flat compound minor seventh with the fundamental. It's dissonant. And because of this more complex dissonance, odd order harmonic distortion often sounds gritty, edgy, but also adds a sense of dimension. And there are lots of situations where you might want to use harmonic distortion. You can apply it to a bass, to help it cut through a mix, use it on a snare to make it more grainy, or apply it to synthesizers to make them sound more aggressive. But I want to show you now a more distinct approach to using harmonic distortion, where we dial in even and odd harmonics to taste on an entire mix to subtly influence texture, dimension, and fullness. So here's a bounce of a mix I've been working on. And you'll notice the plugin I have up is Universal Audio's Vertigo Sound VSM3. It's a harmonic distortion generator. It allows you to dial in some even and odd order harmonics. I'm gonna shut off the third harmonic generator for now, and let's look at this first stage. So for a start, we can choose what frequency band gets distorted, and I'm gonna set this to work just on our lows. You can also control where this applies in the stereo field. I want this working on the mid, because I'm trying to target the kick and the bass. And you can actually monitor just the distortion we're generating. And we can use shape, which is a high cut on the distortion band only. It removes some of the high frequency byproducts of the distortion. Okay, 
back to the whole mix now. Drive controls what and how much is getting sent to the distortion generator. You can totally obliterate things if you want. This feels about right. And level controls the volume of the processed or distorted band. And you see that we have a lot of control over the sound of this already. And another really intelligent part of the monitoring is you can listen to the mid of your mix soloed. So now we can listen to the effect of this. And once we get a sound we like, we can use THD mix, which is a kind of wet-dry control, to set the final balance. Now you can really hear we're getting more fullness and thump out of the kick. Okay, let's check back in on the whole mix. So you might be wondering what the big THD mixer is. It controls the balance between the two distortion stages. But we don't have the third harmonic stage on yet. And in serial mode, which is what we're going to actually use, it doesn't do a thing. All right, let's look at this odd harmonic stage. We're going to have it work just on the high frequency band on the sides. Now, that sounds pretty good right out of the gates. But let's shape a little. This is the distortion that's being generated. Now, we're using this third harmonic stage for texture and brilliance, so we don't want to cleave off too much in the highs. I like to get the drive to where it's just starting to set the light off, which basically is telling us how much gain is being used at any given moment. The lights above level indicate a kind of before and after. Original level versus additional level added. Let's listen to just the side here. Let's rein this in some. Okay, before we call it, let's do a quick check on our mid. Let's see how far we've come. Before. We can hear more fullness in the lows and a really nice sense of dimension in the stereo field. And to achieve this outcome, we had to know a little bit about harmonic distortion. We used the richening, smooth character of the second harmonic stage on the lows in the middle to reinforce the kick and the bass. And we used the more active, complex sound of the third harmonic stage to bring texture and brilliance to the sides in the highs. By the way, if you'd like an even more detailed breakdown of how the plugin VSM3 works, check out this video here. Okay, that's it for this one. Make sure you subscribe so you catch my future videos. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Sahir Galt. I'll see you next time.